Hey, welcome back to Calabunga Corner, and today with me I have Mike Pollock, who did a lot of voices for the 4Kids series. Thank you for joining us today with uh, Calabunga Corner. My pleasure. Thanks for asking. What got you into voice acting? I started in radio. I've always been a radio fan, as far back as I can remember. At some point, I decided, well, I didn't want to be on the radio, obviously. And then when I got into radio in college, back in the mid-80s, I uh, got a chance to do production. I said, I really like doing these commercials more than being the disc jockey that they had me being as well. Because I could do all the wacky voices that I always love to do. And I said, what a perfect way to use my, my radio skills and my character skills. And then eventually I moved back to New York and segued out of radio, which I was in in various forms, and then decided to just pursue voice acting as a thing, because it's perfect for the short attention span in me. Go in, do a thing, be done in an hour, and go on to the next thing. Uh, what was your first character you ever got in any of your acting jobs? The first professional animation character, well there were two. There was one, a direct-to-video series that never made it past VHS, called Little Tug's Big Adventure, and I played the voice of uh, pretty much all of the male boats. It's a live-action boat thing filmed in, the har filmed in the harbor. It tells a cute little story, and I was all the male characters. Then the first actual cartoon was a uh, bit part on Pokemon. I had an episode where I played a grandfather. That was your first acting job with four kids then? Yeah. yeah. What other jobs uh, besides for Turtles did you do? Which other shows on four kids did you do? The first big role on four kids uh, I guess it was Kirby, where I played the mayor, and Samo, the bartender. Uh, Ultimate Muscle, where I was meat. The little guy in the diaper who sounded like this! I also, uh, now the big role that's, that's taken off is uh, Dr. Eggman in Sonic X. And I also played Ella, the maid, who was very funny, so had me playing the maid, which was this. Fighting Foodons, I had a bit part as uh, Hot Dog Garnet. And then later at 4Kids, uh, we were in Viva Pinata. Uh, I was Langston Lickitoe, basically sounded pretty much like me, and Big Oriki uh, in Gogo Riki, who was uh, who was also the basic meat voice, and no, and uh, Bonaparte in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh GX was another big thing. Did you try out for any other Ninja Turtle character when the show was first coming out? The first thing I think I auditioned for them was uh, Garbage Man. When I walked in the room looking like this, they didn't expect the voice of Garbage Man to come out of me. When they were first auditioning the series, they had me read for Splinter. Uh, I didn't get it, but they said, here, listen to this voice from the movie, try and do it. I tried, apparently I didn't do it well enough, but... How many characters on uh, the Ninja Turtle series did you do? The memorable ones were Garbage Man and Kirby. So in the Kirby episode, there was a uh, used car commercial. I was the Southern used car salesman guy! I keep getting credited as a general that I wasn't, but I was some other bit part of soldier or something in some episode. In fact, that's in uh, that made it to my animation demo, so I should have remembered that. That is more dangerous than we ever dreamed! Yes, that was it. Was there any characters you did research on before recording? Yes, there was. There was uh, the, uh, well, Garbage Man, there was nothing to research. They, that was just big and drooly. Um, but when they asked me to play a character based on Jack Kirby, Technically, it wasn't actually Jack Kirby, but it was strongly based on Jack Kirby. I said, really, this requires a little research. So there's not a lot of audio of Jack Kirby around, but um, I did contact the guy who writes uh, Garfield now, whose name I should remember, Mark Evanier, um, and because he had then worked with Kirby. And I said, uh, you yeah, have any audio of him? And he wrote back, Jack uh, never really liked to be uh, portrayed in cartoons, so I really can't help you. Thank you. But I did manage to find some other clip of him uh, interviewed, and I said, well, that sounds uh, like uh, a relative of my wife's, my wife's uncle. So I'll have that voice in my head, and I brought a sample with me. Uh, they played me a sample before we recorded, and it was pretty much doing the voice that I ended up with, which was within the ballpark of sounding like Jack Kirby. You did a fantastic job on that Thank episode. You. It's one of my favorite episodes out of the 4Kids series Thank complete. It, it was an honor yeah. to have the honor. And they did such a great job at adapting it from the original comic book. One of the only episodes, in fact, the only episode that I know of where it aired and then Peter Laird went in there and changed the ending. Mm -hmm. And then the one on the DVD is the changed version. You can't find the original cut. I remember, yes, going back in. And if you listen carefully, my voice didn't quite match in the edit. Maybe I may, I may be the only one who noticed that, but it's like, no, it's not quite right. But... Was Which was the hardest character for you to perform on Ninja Turtles? That's an interesting question. They both, of the two big characters, Garbage Man and Kirby, um, they were both difficult for different reasons. 
Kirby, I wanted to try and, and honor the man and, you know, portray him as respectfully as possible, while Garbage Man was just delightfully physically demanding. I like doing the big, loud characters, and the coolest thing about doing Garbage Man, because he was drooly, I kept, I always work with some type of beverage, and usually it's tea, but in this case I made sure to have water, because I would actually drink water and start the line with a mouthful of water, so it would be especially drooly. <laughs> And it was quite messy. So that was as far as the fashion danger. I ended up rather stained after that. And a little it was a little exhausting, but it was very uh, rewarding. Is there anything you could tell us about the episode that was never finished with Garbage Man and Hun? Yeah, there were... Well, Garbage Man successfully aired in two episodes. And I only heard a rumor that there was to be a third. I was in recording a promo or something completely unrelated to Turtles. And the guy who was producing the promo said, You know, I had a script in uh, mind that was going to have the uh, uh, garbage man come back for things. Really? But it's not happening. Really? That's, I knew that it could have existed and never made it. We know the script was done and it was actually in production and it got pulled in the mid-production. Yeah. So I know some lines was recorded. I was hoping some of yours was so we could no. hear some... News no. on it. No, I only re I, I was only had Garbage Man for the first one and then the episode where he gets killed off. Or uh, allegedly killed off. Is there any current gigs that you are working on right now that you'd like to share for the fans? Yeah, most of the ones that, are, that I can talk about. There are a couple of pilots that I have signed non-disclosure agreements for. Um, but there are a couple of uh, cartoons, uh, slightly skewed a little younger, uh, that I hope will be seeing the light of day. Um, I have a very cool talking plush toy that I can't talk about, but I'll actually be in a couple of plush toys that will be on the store shelves uh, next holiday season. You didn't hear that from me. Um, and I am in some commercials that are running. I'm in a commercial for uh, Sunsetter Retractable Awnings, which probably is, was running in the summer. So if you're watching this not in the summer, don't bother watching for the, for the commercial. But it is on YouTube if you look. It's on my website too at itsamike.com, where I play sun, sun, sunny day, the sun. Um, and also I'm in a radio spot for Focus Factor where I play your brain. Besides for acting, what other interests do you have? Well, my day job these days, in this lovely space in fact, is uh, working at PDR Voice Coaching, where I'm uh, the assistant to uh, voice coaching, uh, voice coach extraordinaire Peter O'Fay. I also have a, a couple of pages in the book, which is available on my website. It's a mic.com. Um, and I will also be uh, doing some animation coaching here. I'm helping people produce their animation demos as we speak. Um, when I'm not doing that, my kids and family take up a tremendous amount of time. Delightfully, uh, a delightful amount of time. But most of my free time is spent with the kids. When I'm not with the kids, I'm in, in the office upstairs watching TV and trying to surf the web. Any TV series that you particularly like right now? Um, yeah, uh, from the comedy genre, The Office is good, 30 Rock is occasionally good. The late night talk shows, when I get a chance to see them, that's the one thing this job has done, is taking out the free time to watch the late night talk shows every night. Um, and like the Discovery Channel shows, the Mythbusters of the world. What would be one advice you'd like to give anyone who is trying to get into acting? Do as much acting as you can anywhere. Community theater is an excellent thing. I'm doing some community theater again um, just because I want to give back to the local community. Um, actually, we, I was hoping to do a thing with my wife, who's also uh, in, uh, an actor, but uh, I booked it and she didn't. Uh, I'll quit. But uh, I'll be doing a radio show, actually, for them, uh, which will be on my website when it's available. Um, but school theater is an excellent thing. If you've got any type of theater program at school, do as much acting as you can, because voice acting is more than just going in and reading words on a page. You've got to be able to act. And the best way to be able to act, apart from formal training, um, usually a more accessible way to act is just community theater and school theater. Thank you very, very much for your time here of on Cowabunga Corner. Of course, thank you so much. And uh, maybe sometime we'll try and get a follow-up interview and see how things are going in the future. Please. And we'll see you all next time on Cowabunga Corner. <laughs>